Greetings everyone and welcome to my game room. My name is Blade Blur and I'm here to present the next entry in the top 20 Genesis games. Now, I would talk about my favorite Genesis game of all time, but there are two reasons why I'm not doing it. One, because if I would talk about it, it would probably take an hour of your time. And two, well, it may or may not appear later in this list. The reason why I'm here though is to talk about another Genesis game that I don't think a lot of people know about, but they should, because it's one of the best platformers of all time. Yes, I went there, because I'm talking about Rocket Knight Adventures. Now, why did this game rock it? Let's find out! Get it? Rocket? Oh my god, I love this game! There's no word to describe how much I love this game. First of all, the main character. I love Sparkster. I mean, he's a possum wearing an armor, wielding a sword with a jetpack. You, you can't, can't talk that! that! But okay, okay, I'm gonna calm down. I think the game deserves a lot more respect than I'm giving it right now. Look at the graphics, look how well the colors pop out. It's definitely better than what you see in games nowadays to begin with. Also, the soundtrack of this game is such a treat for your ears. A lot of people will make fun of the Genesis sound processor, but no one can deny the soundtrack for this game is heavenly. But the number one reason why this game is so amazing is the gameplay. The controls are extremely tight. You have a lot to work with with jumping, using the sword attacks, and even the rocket abilities, but it's still very simple to execute. And you probably think to yourself, why not just use the rocket ability all the time? I can just use it to cross all the gaps. Well, sometimes you just ricochet and just fall down to your death, so it's very wise sometimes just use a regular jump to get across gaps. The same can be said about the sword. Your sword shoots a little fire wave every time you swing it. So, why use the sword itself if the fire attack has more reach? Well, because it does more damage, and that's really fun when you actually try to get to a boss very, very close, even though you have more chances to get hit, but you can finish it much quicker, which adds more to the tension and strategy, which I love. And let me mention, this game came out two decades ago, mind you, and it does all that stuff. And also, from a game design standpoint, this game is just chock full of ideas. I especially like in level 3 how you have to use the reflection of the lava to know exactly where to jump to, and even the shoot em up moments when you use your rocket and you're just slashing away is really fun. And do I really have to mention the giant robot fight? I rest my case. So yeah, despite the amazing level design, the great music, the great graphics, the excellent gameplay, the game wasn't a huge success, but at least it did warrant a sequel, which many didn't like, but I personally loved. There's also the Super Nintendo game that came out, and even a few years ago we got a pseudo-reboot with the Rock and Knight games on both the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Quite frankly, it's one of the best platformers of all time, and it tries something different in every single level, so it's never repetitive, and I just have a blast playing it over and over again, even nowadays in 2013. So, here's the thing, Rocket Knight Adventures is an amazing game, and you can play it all night! Get it? He's a knight. He's wearing armor. Let's go back to the 90s. 1991, Super Sonic. You see Sega needs on mascot to turn their Genesis into a game. We all know a game of this, right? The Super Sonic, Chili Dog, Love, and Blue Blur, known as Sonic the Hedgehog. His game became a hit and sold millions, forging a rivalry between Sega and Nintendo. But there was another. A character who was shoved to the sidelines by his more successful brother. I'm talking about Rystar. Originally a bunny that would pull things towards its body with its ears, now the hero is the son of the star goddess Aruda, who uses his stretchy arms to save the Valley system from the evil Kaiser Greed. One really cool thing about this game is that the bunny design that was originally going to be a Rockstar was later reworked into being an enemy. One of the most interesting elements of this game is the art style. And you thought Kirby was color. This makes it look like fucking Gears of War by the years. Everything, especially Rystar, is exceedingly well animated. The music is really good too, shooting Rystar being one of the most memorable tunes in the entire friggin' game. 
It's pretty much the game's version of World 1-1 One One or Green Hill Zone. Now, what would a game be without a game? I'll tell you what it'd be. Aside from being awesome, it's rather simple. Even though this game's a platformer, you can't jump on enemies like normal. Instead, you have to grab them and pull them towards your body. This not only leads to some creative level design, but also some really challenging and enjoyable boss play. One of my favorites has to be Okat. So freaking satisfying! You don't think this game has such tight controls that John Chart would say has It's got the game feel of a tight Russian woman. You know what would really assuage your fears? The water levels are good! Yeah! Ronnie Star freaking controls like butter in those. You know why? Because you can use the jump button to freaking dash in them. It's actually better controlled than outside water. And freaking outside water controls really freaking good. If you guys are still not convinced after all of that, there's a snowball fight as a mini boss. So that was Rockstar. I hope you pick it up for your genesis if you have one. Anyway, you gotta play, play this game. Even if you have to play all the games 50 times on the Sonic Maker Collection for the GameCube. It's a great game, and wait a minute, this is way too informative for a comedic countdown. I need to offset this somehow. What can I do? Hey, Jordan, got anything for me? Let's go with myself. That'll do. Outrageous. Let's talk blast processing. The concept of a video game console being able to process a billion and one things happening at a time. This was the buzziest of buzzwords back in the 90s, because, you know, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. But anyway, Sega clearly wanted to ram this idea down our throats, and no game uses this better than the brilliant Gunstar Heroes. In this little gem, you control this little dude with a great arsenal of weapons. You've got four different weapons to choose from, of which two can be combined to make something ridiculous and omni-powerful. So the main selling point of a game like Gunstar Heroes is, you never guess it, that everything explodes. Suddenly, all that blast processing crap makes sense. The ability to have 21,500 things on the screen explode at the same time and still retain most of that frame rate. You can have seemingly endless fun blowing up just about everything in sight, and those insane boss fights are basically the pinnacle of all of that, except without some stupid slowdown. I think Gunstar Heroes has a plot, but let's be brutally honest here, why the fuck would you play a game like this for the story? They could have made this game about whatever the hell they wanted, and as long as no one touched the gameplay, it would have been just as good. Gameplay over story, motherfuckers, never forget that. Earthworm Jim is among the best Sega J- Wait, haven't I already talked about this game? Yep. Oh well, couldn't hurt to talk about it again. Earthworm Jim is easily among the Sega Genesis' best games, with addicting gameplay and more bizarre imagery than the average YouTube poop. I mean, you've got a worm in a spacesuit, a trash can lifted straight out of Transformers, a hillbilly, a snowman that lives in a lake of lava, a demonic cat, a goldfish which just so happens to be the easiest boss ever, and those are just the first three levels. But over the top imagery is the only reason why we all love this game. Another big contributor is the gameplay. You got a whip lifted straight out of Castlevania and a gun lifted straight out of Contra. So it's two weapons for the price of one. <laughs> So if you're a fan of good gameplay and trippy imagery, Earthworm Jim is definitely the game of choice. Oh, I almost forgot, the final boss is a slug for a bot. If you all think that the ooze had serious pollution all over the place, you haven't played Vector Man yet. Personally, I think it's very surprising that you people voted this game this high on the list. But let's talk about this game. Vector Man is a game centered around Orbots. No, not that Orbot. 
a group of robots left on the Earth to clean up Earth's pollution and garbage in year 2049. But after high-level warbot Raster got an accident with a nuclear bomb, he turned into a tyrant named Warhead and causes all warbots go nuts. But Vector Man? No, he's not Vector the Crocodile in superhero suit. Anyways, Vector Man, who was taking the toxic wastes to the sun, was unaffected by Warhead's control since he wasn't on the Earth when this happened. So it's your job to stop Warhead's tyranny and restore peace on Earth. This game is a 2D shooter, where you need to shoot warbots and bosses in your way. This game is available in Sonic Gems Collection along with Vector Man 2. But I wish I could say more about this game, but I can't since I haven't gone far in this game thanks to its difficulty. EVEN ON A LAME DIFFICULTY! Then I must be really terrible in this game. But nevertheless, Vector Man is one of the best games for Genesis, and it's not hard to see why. But there's still one game left. What is this game? Well, let's find out. Hit it, Oscar! Right from the get-go, I was pretty sure that a Sonic game was going to be number one. After all, Sonic the Hedgehog is a shining star of Sega created to compete with the superstar Mario. A character that has the capabilities to match blows with him is something to behold. So the question is, which game takes the number one spot? Well, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 certainly gave the series a good starting point, and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 made so many innovations and improvements. This leads us to the number one Sega Genesis game ever made, as voted by you guys. Say hello to not Sonic the Hedgehog 3, but Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean- Nah, I'm just kidding, it's Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Thanks to an incredible amount of votes, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles takes a spot as the number one Sega Genesis game ever made, which makes me very happy since this is also my favorite game in the Genesis library. Now many can consider this as two games, but it has been confirmed that Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were originally supposed to be just one game. However, due to time and financial complications, it was split into two games and, thanks to what Sega deemed as lock-on technology, gamers can play through the full experience the way Sega intended. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles takes place after Sonic 2. Dr. Robotnik intends to steal the Master Emerald and tricks Knuckles into antagonizing our hero Sonic. And so, the game still opts for the classic, find Robotnik and put a stop to his plans formula. Everything else on the other hand, was expanded upon from design to music to gameplay. Sonic still controls as he always has, but now has some cool new tricks up his non-existent sleeve, such as the Instant Shield and access to Bubble, Lightning and Fire Shield, each with their own uses and properties. The visual design has also taken a turn for the astonishing, at least by the standards of the 90s. Not only do we have a more polished interface and presentation, we have forests sliding on fire, magma spewing down, snowboarding, and knuckles laughing all the way. Speaking of which, Sonic is now not the only playable character. The adventure of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles can now be played through as the Spike Fist Echidna himself, and he brings a whole new set of abilities to the table such as gliding and climbing on walls. Even Tails is able to play the hero in this game. And if you're playing as Sonic, a friend can use the second controller to take control of Tails and give the blue blur access to some hidden nooks and crannies. The game itself can be pretty short and you can beat it in a matter of 3 hours or so. But the game still has so much to offer and it creates such a spectacle that you'll likely find yourself coming back for more, especially if you're after those elusive Chaos Emeralds. And if you want some fun trivia to go along with this review, the lock-on technology allows you to play as Knuckles in Sonic 2, a pre-release tournament of the game was held in Alcatraz Island, and as many of you may already know, the game's music was apparently done by Michael Jackson. Now, you guys are the ones who voted this game at the top, so I'm pretty sure you all know just how great this game is. But let's look a little deeper to end this off. This game was a crown jewel in the 90s, pushing the Sega Genesis to its limits to give us gamers some of the greatest experiences of our lives, as well as some of the most memorable. When I was a child, this game was my favorite game to play. 
I played it with friends, I played it alone, I played it when I was cheerful, I played it when I was having a bad day. I completed the quests, sought after those emeralds, and played as my favorite heroes. And it's because of this series of games that I am here now as a proud gaming enthusiast. This game was the end of a classic series, but it was the dawn of a legacy. Sonic has become one of the most popular and beloved characters ever created, and I have Sega to thank for starting my life as a gamer. Sure, Sonic has had some pretty bad hiccups in recent years, but no matter what strides gaming technology makes and no matter how amazing modern day games can be, it would be a grave mistake if we didn't acknowledge where these games started. I am the Green Scorpion, and thanks to you guys, I am proud to announce Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles as the number one greatest Sega Genesis game ever made. Gaming development has certainly given me some of my favorite games as of late. But there is nothing that makes me feel like a kid again, like taking up the controller of a true classic. A very special thanks to those who participated, those who voted, and those of you here now for sharing the experience with me. Take care everyone, and I'll see you next time.